now with all of our light plane emitters and our sun in the scene, I want to go ahead and do a test render to see if our light sources are actually going to be okay. So what I want to do is come over here to my fry render shelf and click the camera button and then just go ahead and look through the fry render camera so we can get a bit get in a position to go ahead and do a test render of where our camera would actually be when we go to render it here. So I'm just going to set it say something like that's that's probably fine. Now we want to go ahead and turn on our heads up display here or our information display here so that we can take out basically all the noise in a real quick time and so that nothing in our scene is actually going to be blurry. In order to turn this on all you got to do is come over here to display UI elements or I'm sorry heads up display and your object details just make sure that this is checked. Now let's go ahead and create a, a polygon sphere here because I want to make sure that I have enough distance to the camera here. So let's just go ahead and create a polygon sphere here. This is just to measure the distance to the camera and I'm just going to go ahead and take this back. I'll try not to select anything here. Uh, so now our, our ball is 240 units away from the camera so now what I want to do is just I can go ahead and delete that ball just remember the number so go over here to view select camera our uh, attribute editor scroll down and we want to go ahead and look for the depth of field settings now the focus distance is at 240 and we want to say set this to 260 so that it takes out all the noise in the scene and it's actually going to render far enough away from the camera that it'll be clean so we can capture everything inside the scene. Our f-stop here is the higher the number the more detail the camera is actually going to be able to capture but remember the higher you set this number the darker the overall image is going to be so if you say set it to 64 it's going to be an extremely dark image and then you would have to really try to brighten the image with the ISO so I'm just going to go ahead and set that to say like something like 25 so I can capture enough of the detail in the image but still remain some of the some of the light that's actually going to be in the scene it's going to be easier for me to really just go ahead and control the light and I'm just going to go over here to my render globals open my render settings here and just export and under the ignition tab just make sure I export the RCS and execute fry render um, I'm not going to set a maximum amount of time for it to render or a maximum amount of passes for it to render because I'm just going to stop it manually once I see that we're actually okay because this is just a test so I'm going to go ahead and click accept click close and then you know bring up my render window and go ahead and hit the render button and as you can see it's taking a little bit longer to export all the geometry in the fry render let's go ahead and let it work here and it's going to bring up our renderer now as you can see there's a little bit of dark image in here and I'm just going to go ahead and hit pause while this test renders out and then I'll come back once I adjust the lights and stuff now as you can see it's still test rendering and you still see a a good bit of noise here in the scene um, eventually th all this noise would would go away and I know it, as you can see it's really updating really quickly but the main thing that I want to see here is how the lights actually reacting in the scene and this light setup is um, I'm, o I'm okay with it but I still want to tweak a few things to the light sources before I go ahead and actually start applying all my t materials in our scene so in the next lesson, um, you know, let's tweak some.